In my last video, I bought $65 EVA foam from Amazon. Now that I've got the boat completely covered in this EVA foam, I wanna share with you guys whether it was actually worth it or if it was a complete waste of money. We also got some other updates on the Bass Cat, so stay tuned, it's good to see your face. So I spent the last day and a half working on the boat and filming it for you guys, and well, the microphone didn't work, so this is how all my footage turned out. I just <laughs> oh my gosh. So at this point, we've officially finished the sea deck in all of the boat, or should I say EVA foam. For those of you who don't know or you didn't see the last video, we covered my boat in cheap $65 EVA sea deck that I bought from Amazon. Essentially, all we did was get the back deck finished yesterday. After we were done doing all that, we turned around, we did the floor, got the floor figured out. Overall, we were able to get the entire boat done with just four rolls of the EVA foam. That being said, I wanna share with you guys kind of the pros and cons at this point now that I'm done. Before, in the last video, I talked about some things that I didn't like. But before we get into that, you guys probably wanna see what the boat looks like, so check it out. Everybody's uh, happy to see you back in the videos, Rach. What, uh, what do you got to say about that? Happy to be here, sweating my butt off. All right, so we are up here in the front of the deck. I'm really happy with the overall turnout so far. And the reason that I say so far is because we actually haven't attached any of the lids to the hinges yet. I am crossing my fingers that I did this to the best of my ability so that when I do put the hinges back on, the uh, lines all line up. But let's talk about what you guys are getting into if you plan on doing something like this yourself because it's a lot of work. So when it comes to doing the lines, if you guys are gonna cut it out by yourself with a razor blade, I wouldn't really recommend it. It was really freaking hard. If you order from Sea Deck, everything's cut with a laser. So like it, it comes pre-cut out, everything's already figured out. So you know when a computer does it, it, it makes a lot more sense. Pros and cons are pros, it looks really good. Cons, it, it's really hard to do. Uh, another pro is it feels good on your feet. It feels way better than carpet. I love the sponginess, I love the comfort. Another con, it's just not as form-fitting as you know, carpet is. Another thing I noticed that's kind of a con with this brand was some of the shades of the rolls were all different color. Like I did not get the same consistent gray throughout all of the EVA foam. Now, I don't really care because over time, this stuff is just gonna get dirty. I kind of goofed a little bit by choosing such a light color because this is probably going to get really dirty really quick. You know, it is what it is. This is not gonna be my premier bass boat. This is just gonna get me out, go fishing, have some fun. I think we're gonna go ahead and just be done with EVA foam for right now, hopefully. Then we're gonna move to putting the hinges and the latches on. So that's exactly what I did. I went ahead and started putting all the latches and hinges back on the compartments. Go figure, the GoPro was giving me problems and wouldn't time lapse properly. So it's not the greatest footage ever, but you guys get the point. All I did was put on latches and hinges. All right, so we got all the hatches and the latches on the Bass Cat. This thing is finally starting to look like a real boat. You guys have no idea how excited I just got. It's been a long time coming. So here we go. We got a latch on the rod locker, this little compartment, this guy up here, and that one over there. Those are the only latches that I could actually get on because the rest of the hardware was missing the screws. So I'm gonna have to take this screw right here up to the hardware store, probably get six to eight more of those. Not sure where the original ones went, but we definitely need them because I still have one more compartment up front if I decide to keep the deck extension and four in the back because I got the gas hatches, 
and then I got the live wells. This is where I really need your guys' help because I'm not sure what to do in this scenario. I am missing a hatch right there to one of my live wells. It never came with the boat, it wasn't on it. Not sure what happened to it. Should I try and form one out of fiberglass? I do have leftover fiberglass, so I thought about making a mold out of you know this one and testing my fiberglass skills, seeing if I could maybe make one myself out of wood and then just cover it up. That is a option. If you guys would like to see that, let me know because I'm willing to try it even though I hate working with fiberglass. It's grind time, baby. We gotta get those holes fixed on the back of the boat. I'm just gonna use the grinder with some sandpaper on it. I have a lighter grid on there, not as light as I would like, but hit at it, get it all cleared up so we can drill those holes and fill them with epoxy, so you guys know the deal. This stuff is no joke to do in a garage, so let us just get it. So I'm drilling the holes just a little bit bigger because I want to be able to get a syringe in there real good. It's already got a hole, so it's not going to hurt me to put any more in there. That was smart. Nice shot. All kinds of crap in my eyes. All right, time for epoxy. Little bottom piece of a water bottle. We're gonna mix ourselves some epoxy. I'm just gonna give it a little savage. Mix a little bit at a time. This stuff makes a mess. It's so frustrating. I'm actually, I probably need gloves, huh? So I don't get this all over my fingers. I've seen a couple guys do this on YouTube where they essentially just fill the holes with epoxy and they put clear tape over them to give it like a nice flat seal. In the morning, they peel it off. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh, shizzle. Oh, I probably should cover that hole because the epoxy is just pouring out. I wish I could have the boat a little more level than it is, to be honest. I could try and crank it down a little bit. Oh, it's on the John boat, eh? I mean, John boat, what? What? Wow, that. Just wait for it, babe, the comment section. Everybody's gonna be like, what are you doing? You're doing that entirely wrong. You got everything so backwards. Oh, we ran out of tape. I need more tape. Oh, I would have done this and filled it with that and putty this, putty that. Honestly, I kind of wish I did fill it with putty. I'm kind of regretting that I didn't, but we're going to try this, see how it heals up. I personally like using Marine Putty by JB Weld, but this is something where it's a little more on the sketchy side. So as you guys can see right here, we have the clear tape and it's over top of the filled epoxy hole. I used clear epoxy, that's why it looks just like the clear tape. According to the people on the YouTubes, this is the ideal way to do it. When it's done, I peel the tape off, sand her down, put some gel coat over it, and we should be pretty good to go. Oh, all right. Well, since, you know, there's gonna be 200 comments about how I did the epoxy wrong, I'm gonna crash a, crash, crack a bush latte and uh, drink to the haters. No, but for real, with the whole epoxy thing, I don't know if I'm in love with how I went about doing that. I guess we're gonna see the final result. Because of the hole is straight into the back, if it's too far this way, the epoxy is gonna pour out, which is what I'm hoping the tape fixes, but if it was too far the other way, then it would just go inside and it wouldn't hold. So all we can do is wait it out for now. So I'll give you guys an update. If that doesn't work, what I think I'm gonna do is take some kind of putty where I can knead it together, really get that hole closed up, smush it in there, let it harden, sand it down. And then from there, maybe put a protective layer of like gel coat or something like that over top. So let me know what you guys think for your comments down below. Do you think I should just drill those back out, redo it a different way? That was the way that like 90% of you guys commented in my last video about that ordeal. The last thing we're gonna be doing here for tonight and for today's video is going to be running electrical for the ignition. The ignition's all good to go. I got that all rewired. So we gotta get it back to the dashboard because guys, the Bass Cat's pretty much done. Well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say it's done because it's not even close to done. I'm about ready to put this thing in a lake 
fire that engine up and just see what happens. I know a lot of you guys might be against that, but I just gotta see it for myself, you know? I wanna see how the engine runs. I wanna see how this thing feels on the water. Pretty much the only thing preventing me from getting there is the fact that I don't have a shift lever yet. I need to buy a new one. I don't know if I'm gonna get a hot foot right now just because investment-wise on this boat, one big thing that is going to really kick me in the butt investment wise with this boat is going to be the seats. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was kinda hoping Basscat would help me out. I tried to shoot them some emails and see if they could shoot me some discounts on the seats considering a good amount of people are watching this, you know, to give me like 10% off on seats, but they didn't wanna do that. I guess I gotta buy them and I'm not buying the Basscat ones because they're $900. If you guys got any alternatives to getting seats for this thing, rather than spending $1,000, please let me know in the comment section down below. Bass Cat, if y'all are watching this and you guys wanna give me a discount on some seats, I'll happily buy them from you, but I just can't spend more on the seats than I spent on the actual boat. That just doesn't make sense. So anyways, enough complaining about the seats. We need to get a shifter in this boat. So let me know what you guys think as far as recommendations for one for me to order. Part of me wants to just go with like a cheap BRP. Those things have been solid for me my whole life for just like getting the job done. I know a lot of you guys wanna see a hot foot put in here, but with the throttle cables and the linkage cables already working and already ran, I just gotta get them hooked up. So I don't even know if I'm gonna keep this engine entirely yet. I might sell it and get a different engine for the boat. So there's a lot of things, a lot of questions that I have but I would love to hear from you guys what you think I should go with for a good quality inexpensive shifter for the boat but for right now let's get the ignition installed because uh, this is gonna be a pain in my butt so to get the ignition wires all the way back to the dashboard this is what I'm going to do I'm gonna take some rope and I'm essentially gonna fish it through the back of the boat using the throttle cable or shift cable not sure which one this is I figured the easiest thing to use was one of those cables because they're super, super stiff. So it's gonna be easy to take out and put back through. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put this guy on here like this, tie a simple knot so that it can't come through just like that. And then what I am going to do is I am going to take some extra rope off of here and I'm going to actually attach a second one. I'm gonna keep this one on there so that when I pull it through, I can pull it back through, but I'm gonna attach another one to it so that I can get the actual ignition back through over here. And then even this way, if we mess up, we still have a way to back out. That should be nice and secure. We got our rope to bring the throttle cable back, and then we're gonna have our new rope to bring our ignition through. Alrighty, so I'm gonna need you to uh, go down there and pull the throttle cable, so I'll take the camera. All right, so Rach is gonna pull the throttle cable from back there. I'm gonna pull it from right here. So go ahead, just start pulling, Rach. And when you see the blue wire or rope, let me know. You got it? Boom. All right, so now pull on the blue rope until you find the other piece that should be connected to it. Okay, now pull that one through. Keep pulling, keep pulling. All right, so just feed it to me a little bit. And it should come right through. Oh, look at that, it's already back, wow. All right, bingo, bingo. I'm going to attempt to feed this through like this. It's thicker than it needs to be for sure, but I don't wanna risk ripping any of these off. We're gonna try and just wrap this really nice and hope that it will make it through. The freaking steering cable. There she is. All right, so I gotta get this mess all untangled, but it worked. First try too. I honestly thought it was gonna be way harder, but it seems like we're good to go. So, so now, said ignition wire, we'll go through the dashboard and out where the key goes. I'm hoping this is the right ring. I ended up ordering like three ignitions to begin with because I didn't like a lot of them. Actually, I still don't like this one too because I don't even think it has a kill switch like embedded in the key, which is kind of what I wanted. So I'll have to get, I don't know how that works. I'll have to figure that out with the, with the throttle, but I did not expect that to go like that, but we got ourselves a key, ladies and gentlemen. 
Look at that. All right. Now all we got to do is get a way to shift this thing into gear. We can go take it for a rip rip. What do you guys think about that? Some of you guys are probably going to freak out, but I think we take it for a rip rip and actually take this thing fishing for the first time. This thing really is starting to look like a boat. Although it's kind of still a disaster, it's really starting to look like a boat. A cool one at that. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna end it for today's episode. I know today wasn't too crazy, not a ton of new updates or anything like that. Honestly, I made today's video just so you guys could get an update on the EVA foam. I really wanted you guys to see the final product and honestly, it looks great. I was a little frustrated at first and shout out to all the people that were supporting me with this pull ordeal. It wasn't easy. It was probably one of the harder things I had to do on this boat beside the stringers and the drain and the floor, I should say, but it looks good. Gosh, I'm super happy with it. Once I put the latches on, you know, everything is down and solid, so we don't really gotta worry about stuff flying around. I am considering getting those gas struts for all this because a lot of you guys recommend it. That'll come in a later video, but I really just wanted to give you guys my overall thoughts on the $65 Amazon EVA phone. Do I think it's worth it? Should you guys consider buying it? I was not paid to say this. I was not, you know, affiliated with the brand at all whatsoever. I just found the cheapest stuff I could find and bought it. And I'm gonna give it the green light for now. Although it was frustrating, there were some things I didn't like about it. When you compare $65 a sheet to what you know this stuff actually costs, you're saving a significant amount of money. Now, the big question that you guys are probably wondering, is it cheaper than carpet? Did I really spend a lot more money doing this? Should I have went with carpet? If you do go with the Amazon stuff, you're gonna spend just about the same amount of money as carpet. So I went ahead and I did the math. I officially spent $260 on this EVA phone. Now, hear me out. I spent $260 because I bought four rolls. Originally, I only needed three rolls. So I had to spend more money because I screwed up on the rod locker and the front deck. So I ended up spending more money. I went ahead, I went online, I looked up carpet, I got the exact mill that I would have put in here and it would have cost me $240. It actually would have been cheaper to do the EVA foam from Amazon had I not messed up. We potentially could have saved some money is what I'm trying to say. So looks great. I wanna know what you guys think. I think it looks good. I mean, the boat's not really pretty and washed up right now, but it's just great to see this boat finally looking like a real boat. So I just wanted to show you guys that now that you've seen it from here on out, we're pretty much just gonna be prettying up the boat. Like we've done the majority of the stuff that needs to be done to this boat to get it ready for the water. The only thing it's missing is that shifter. But from here, you guys know what to do. Hammer out that comment section. What do you think we should do to those holes in the back? Should I just let it ride with that epoxy? Should I drill it back out, shove it with some putty, like water weld, get that in there, sand it down, gel coat it? What should I do for a dashboard? Because we're gonna need one of those soon. What should I do for the shifter? And uh, if there was anything else that you guys would wanna see me do to the interior of this boat, let me know. So I have an early day tomorrow, guys. I grind my butt off every night to try and bring you guys videos. I'm gonna try and figure out how to get at least two videos out a week. I'm working on it, trying to play with the schedule, trying to make this work, but I'm um, at least getting one out a week for you guys. So thank you for every single one of you that stays tuned, supports me. I wouldn't be able to do this stuff without you guys. So with that being said, I'll see you guys next time.